Hey guys, Stanford here from the Fun Robotics Network, and I'm hanging out with Team 294 right now, and we're going to be checking out this super slick machine. They got a super robust under the bumper intake, really low belly pan, high pivot shooter that can actually shoot over defenders, and we're also going to be going through the sensors that power all this. I've got uh, Sam, Drew, Gavin, and Eric here to help me out, so stay tuned for all that more in another episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. All right, Sam, take it away. So this is actually not our first design that we went through. We originally had a low pivot shooter that flipped up into an elevator. Uh, we had some troubles with the packaging though and the candy cane design and the pivot angle wasn't to our liking and it just became get, started to get more and more complicated and we just didn't like where the design was headed. So we switched to this high pivot shooter that has only one degree of freedom and can do all of the functions that we needed to. One of the requirements on our robot was having a super, super low belly pan and bumpers to play defense really well. And we did this here by using a 2 by one and a one by one on top of each other to lower our belly pan to less than half an inch off the ground. This helped us really get under other robots and play super, super strong defense through our matches. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next thing on this robot. Take it away, Drew. So continuing with our intake, uh, we decided at the start of the season that we needed a full width intake because of the low visibility uh, in the in the field this year. So with our full width intake, uh, because of the SDS modules uh, in the way, we needed to center the note before it actually got into our robot. So if you look underneath, we actually have two inch uh, flex wheels that start to center the robot. And then inside that, there's some sushi rollers uh, that actually push the, ro uh, the note fully into the middle of the robot. Uh, also, as we started to notice on the week one of competitions, robots front uh, bar were getting destroyed with under the bumper intakes. So we actually added reinforcements here. So there's a quarter inch plate with an eighth inch uh, tube and then another quarter inch plate. So this allows us to basically smack whatever we want without having any issues. Uh, after uh, Arizona, we noticed that there was a little bit of bending even with all this metal here. So we had to add this uh, triangular uh, structure to help uh, transfer the load into the rest of the robot. Uh, so uh, was under the bumper something you guys were planning from the start or did you guys start with over the bumper and transition? So we started with like a kind of like a through uh, or uh, like through the bumper. So our intake was like in the middle of the robot with a giant hole out of our belly pan. Uh, we never really thought about uh, doing an over the bumper for a very long time because we saw uh, that the game had very high energy potential uh, with how much space it was and the new motors and everything that's coming out this year that makes FRC just a faster paced game. Uh, so under the bumper was just the choice that ended up happening because of those conditions. All right, now take it away, Gavin. Alrighty, so moving on to our shooter. After it goes through the intake, it'll go right to our feeder wheels in our shooter. Our feeder wheels are made out of um, two inch stealth wheels. Those are spaced um, just enough so the note has a 16th of inch of compression. Then it'll feed into um, our shooter here, make sure the note's in there with a banner sensor. And then our, we have four inch stealth wheels on our actual shooter wheels, um, powered with a 24 to 18 abduction, so we can get more speed on that. And then we also wanted to get some spin on the notes. So our best way of doing that is we have top and bottom rollers powered. And then we have this sort of funky wheel spacing. As you can see, like these wheels are slightly more to the um, left while these wheels are slightly more to the right. Um, we found in testing that that would give us a lot better spin than just having either no wheels on the bottom or both wheels shifted over. Um, on, to on top of that, it, over it overall allowed us to just get a little spin in our shots, make everything more consistent um, so we could shoot from further. Now, if we want to go and test some of this out, you can intake a piece. So the piece is now goes through the intake, right? And it's just stowed in our shooter. You can kind of see that with the LEDs. And then we're going to go a low shot. This is our manual shot. So from there, we shoot. Um, from then, intake another piece. Um, we also have our overhead shot. Um, so that'll be our shot to shoot over defense from the podium. 
And then finally, we have our amp shot that we also use. So this arm was made to be as very versatile as possible. So we're going to intake. Um, then we're going to head up. This is our amp position. So it's lined up so we have a nice angle right into the amp so we get that downward trajectory to make it more consistent. Then shoot it out. And then from here, um, we, we noticed a lot of notes would like to get um, stuck on our bot. So we avoided that by adding zip ties here so the notes can't get stuck anywhere. And then also, oh no, the, no the note got stuck in our belly pin. Well, we can still just put our shooter down, intake all of that, so then we can shoot it out again. Alrighty. So, um, what kind of configurations do you test with your shooter and kind of what, what brought you to this final design? I know you guys like spin, um, um, but was there other stuff you guys tried for uh, better uh, shots? Initially, we, um, we started with a bunch of prototypes with um, different compressions with um, hor um, horizontal flywheel shooters. Um, but those, they got the compression, but the spin was a little iffy on that. Um, from then, we moved on to a shooter with uh, three inch wheels instead of four, um, but we found that that didn't have enough speed to it. Um, so then we finally moved on to four inch wheels to do the speed. And th this is when we started focusing more on the spin. So we tried um, both taking out wheels on these, like originally having four on the bottom, three on the top, um, all on the outside versus all on the inside. We even took some wheels off of this side. And this one we just found to be the most consistent with the uh, wacky offset on top and bottom and four on each side to ensure we still got that power on it. All right, sounds good. Now uh, let's go and take a look at the sensors that help this guy out. So we have sensors um, throughout the robot in the intake, in the shooter. As you may have seen earlier, the sensors um, help to tell the drivers where the note is during different stages of the robot, such as orange representing when, the sense, when there was a note in the shooter, blue representing what it's intaking, and orange uh, as it intakes into feeder. Purple actually represents the um, shooter spinning up to velocity so that the uh, drivers can make sure that when it's shot, it's at proper speeds, with green representing the uh, that it's spun up properly. Past that, we have... Nope. Yep. Past that, we have vision. Uh, we actually have two cameras on the robot now. The first this is April tag camera to see the April tags uh, feeds into our odometry and to the smart dashboard so our drivers can see where they are on the field in case they don't have the best view of the robot. We also recently added this second GoPro camera on top of the wrist to help show us uh, like after match replays uh, how the uh, how notes were shot out, trajectories, maybe we like shot over the speaker once. We can see like was the angle too high, did it shoot too powerfully, or did it undershoot too much by a little bit. So the GoPro camera helps us see that. All right, guys, so that's been your tour of this super slick little machine here that was on Einstein Finals here in 2024. And these guys have been doing really well here at the Beach Blitz off-season event. So please check these guys out in future years. And thank you guys so much for allowing us to come by and see this awesome machine. And good luck with the rest of your competition. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.